Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome all of you worshiping here this morning at Trinity Lutheran Church. If you'd be so kind to sign the communication card, whether you're a member here or whether you're a guest, just take the appropriate side and sign your name and let us know your worship with us this morning. It'd be greatly appreciated. If you are communing with us this morning, please circle your name also that we know that you worshiped and also communed with us as well. Uh, just a few announcements before we begin our worship this morning. First of all, today is the last day to order your pizzas from youth. So if you'd like to order any pizza kits from our youth, please do so today. Today is the last day. Uh, today also, after worship, um, the handbell choir is starting up their spring scheduling. So if you'd like to be a part of the handbell choir, or at least try it out. Today's the day to do so. So we're having practice right after church. Right, Pam? That is correct. There we go. Uh, Circle of Friends is this coming Wednesday at 1215. We're having pulled pork sandwiches, or I'm not supposed to, answer, to, to announce that. 1215. Sign up. Sign up in the narthex to let us know your worst, that you are coming to Circle of Friends. Also on Wednesday, it is in the middle of, we're actually starting Lent. And so we have opportunities for worship for you. The first opportunity is at 11 o'clock in the morning. You come to worship and then sign up for Circle of Friends beforehand and come to Circle of Friends at 12.15. Or if you can drive at night and you don't have, you have some things going on in the daytime, you can worship with us at 7 o'clock. But beforehand, we also have a soup meal at 6 p.m. in the gym. So 7 o'clock is worship. 6 p.m. is the meal in the gym. Uh, over 60's luncheon is coming up on March the 27th. The youth will be serving those who are over 60 in the congregation. Uh, please, please uh, put that on your calendar for March the 27th. And also, don't forget, next Sunday is time change. So, fall, not fall back one hour. You have to spring forward one hour. So that means you lose an hour of sleep. I'm sorry to tell you that. But so today, if it's next week. Today, right now, it'd be 11 o'clock, not 10 o'clock, and you miss worship. So make sure you move your clock forward one hour. For that being said, let's begin our worship with our processional hymn, Please Rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Let us confess our sin in the presence of our God and of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Testament reading for this Sunday is from Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number. And there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God, and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if we confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men 
and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like, to invite, I'd like to invite all the children for a special message for them. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good, good. What do I have here? It is a glass of water, right? There's a glass and there's water in it, okay? So I'll just put that right there. That's okay? See my glass of water? What's in it again? Water, okay. My question for you this morning is this. How close are you to water? How close are you to water? What's the closest water next to you? That glass. Is that right? Think about that really good. Okay. This glass of water is the closest water to you, right? And everybody would say, yeah, most likely, right? But is that right? The closest water to you is in this glass? You're, you're shaking your head no. What do you think? If you don't know? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, you know, in, in this environment we live in, I have to say you're wrong. You know why I say that? Because there's particles of water in the air. Did you realize that? And there's, the more the particles of water in the air, the more humid it is. That's what humidity is. It's water in the air, right? So when you said that this is the closest water to you, that's, that's partially right, but not completely right. Because there's, there's water all around us, isn't there? All in the air. Uh, am I upsetting you, Avi? <laughs> I didn't mean to. I don't mean to upset you, Avi. I just want to let you know that water, water's in the air, isn't it? And there's water all around us. You know, in the epistle read earlier, it says the word of God. Where is it? It's near you, is what Paul says. You know, oftentimes we think the word of God is what we think it's just the Bible, right? It's just that book that we look at. And that's, the word, that's God's word, right? But you know what? God's word is actually closer to you than that Bible, isn't it? Because God's word is actually in you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. It's what we believe. It's what we talk about. It's what we confess. So when someone see, how does someone see Jesus? They can see Jesus by looking in the Bible and reading about Jesus in the Bible. But you know how also Jesus can be seen? Inside of you, right, how you do, how you act, what you say, even by what you think, right? So God's Word is not just the Bible. God's Word is also in us because in God's Word, God tells us exactly who we are and who are we. We're His people. We're His sons and His daughters, His children. And God loves us so much, He gave up His Son, Jesus, to die upon that cross and to forgive us all of our sins. And Jesus, the one who loves us so much, it is He is our God. He is in us, right? He's with us every day of our life. So whatever happens in us, in our lives, and there are some scary things that happen in life, right? There are some scary things, aren't there? We don't need to afraid, be afraid, do we? Because we know God is always with us, because God's word is always with us. And let's all fold our hands, and I want you to pray with me, okay? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to live your word for others. We pray 
In Jesus' name, amen. And here is the... Take an item and go. I don't have a hymn right now for you, so...
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The base of meditation this morning comes to us from the epistle, Romans chapter 10. We listen to get, get into these words. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we proclaim. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Hal and Linda bought a home in northern Maine. It was a beautiful little home. They bought it from two sisters who were elderly. They moved in and everything was great in the summertime, but when the autumn wind started blowing, Linda started noticing that she could feel the wind blowing through the outside walls to the inside. She told her husband Hal time and time again, this house is a beautiful house, but it needs insulation, more insulation because I can feel the wind inside from the outside. Hal's only comment was, this is a beautiful house and we'll be okay. If those sisters lived here all those years, we can too. Well, day in and day out, Linda kept telling Hal, her husband, we need more insulation in this house. It's going to get bad this winter. And her husband's response was always, if those only ladies could live in this house for all those years, we can too. It was in November. And the temperature plummeted one night to below zero degrees Fahrenheit. The next morning they woke up and there was frost on the interior of the walls that were outside. And the wife looked at her husband and said, this house needs more insulation. And once again, with a shaky voice, the husband said, if those only sisters could live here, we can too. But he was a little unsure about himself at this point in time, so he got himself on the phone and talked to the early sisters who now lived miles away. After a brief conversation, Hal hung up the phone. Linda looked at her husband and she said, what did they say? And with a muttering voice, he said, for the last 30 years, They've lived in Florida during the winter months. <laughs> there was no secret in trying to keep the house warm whatsoever. He just thought if they could do it, we can too. There's another story to be told here. A story by the name of Frank. Frank and Charlotte were members of the Little Brown Church. They were active in many things. As a matter of fact, Frank was always seen on that campus of that, that, par that parish. Not on the, if not on the parish, he would be at the parsonage, always fixing things, always doing things. But the only problem? Frank was hardly ever in church. He hardly ever worshipped, but yet he was there doing things. If the lawn needed mowed in the summertime, he would be the one who mowed it. If there was plumbing work to be done, he was the one who did it. In the wintertime, if the sidewalks need to be shoveled from snow, he was the one who did it. If there's anything in the congregation going on, he was the one doing it when it comes to maintenance. But he was never in church. The question was asked once to him, why do you do all these things for the church but not, not actually be in church? Frank would always just say, well, you see, my parents, and even my wife Charlotte's parents, they were charter members of this congregation, served this congregation well, and I want to keep this congregation going. And if they can do it, we can too. One summer afternoon, the temperature was quite warm, and Frank was outside mowing the church lawn with a push mower, when all of a sudden he had a massive heart attack. He was rushed to the hospital in an ambulance, and the pastor met him there. And in the emergency room, the pastor asked him a simple question. If you die from this, are you sure you're going to be going to heaven? Frank's response was, I assume I am because my parents worked all their lives for this church, and if they can do it, we can too. 
That's a sad, sad story, is it not? He was around God's word and God's sacraments. He was around the salvation message that that church had, but it never rooted in. He thought it was all about what he did, what he said, all the things that he fixed around that church. It's what he thought salvation was all about. And his motto in life was, we can too, yet his motto did not cut it when it comes to everlasting salvation. The confession of faith, we can too, is not a saving confession of faith. St. Paul writes to the Roman Christians, those who worship at that place in Rome, and obviously that congregation was made up of Gentile believers and Jewish believers. And the point in our text this morning, he is talking concerning the Jewish believers in that church and throughout the world. And his point that he's trying to make is that one is not saved by one's self-righteousness. One is not saved by what we do and by what we say. One is not saved by the attitude, we can do it also. For that was many times the attitude of the Jews in Paul's day and age. For you see, their forefathers were God's chosen people. And through all the life of every generation they did what they did because their forefathers did it and they had the attitude of we can too in other words because I am a Jewish person then I have salvation what a self-righteous attitude to have and many times we many times have that same attitude as well thinking is by what we say and by what we do that gives us everlasting life but it is not an eternal confession Jesus tells us through Paul's writings, the word is near you. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart. That if you believe and if you confess that Jesus is Lord and that he rose again from the dead, you will be saved. Paul never says anything about you can do or we can do or anything that I can do as well. Now the message is clear. The salvation that we have is from our God, who gave his son Jesus Christ to die upon that cross, who is Lord, and yet he gave up his lordship to die upon that cross for you and for me. He takes our self-righteousness with him and dies the death we deserve. And we can now confess that Jesus Christ did die for our sins and that Sacrifice is accepted by our Heavenly Father in heaven because he raised him from the dead. Therefore, we do confess boldly that Jesus is Lord and that he is risen from the dead and he lives and reigns to all eternity. And this is our saving confession. Not that we can also or we can too, or it's what I do and say, but it's what he has done. For Jesus died for us on the cross and gave, gives us everlasting life. And by him and him alone do we have everlasting salvation. It is now in his presence we understand who we are and where we live and where we stand. We are reminded that we are people of God not by what we do and by what we say or even by our association with our relatives or generations before us. But we are people of God because of Jesus. It's all about him. A new recruit in the Navy was just gone through service through his his initial service and at one point he had a good friend who was getting married and so he applied to get a pass for the weekend his commanding officer said sure I will give you the pass but you must be back here at 700 hours on Sun 700 hours on Sunday morning the new recruit looked at his commanding officer said You don't understand, sir. I'm in the wedding. And the commander looked at him and said, You don't understand, son. You're in the Navy. Be back by 700 hours or else. We're reminded that we are people of God. We are in God's house as his people. He tells us exactly who we are and where we stand with him. And we're not to do our own thing or our own time whatsoever. Our salvation does not rely upon, we can too. But our salvation is in Jesus. 
whose death and resurrection gives us everlasting life. It is in his name we gather and worship our Lord and Savior. Jesus is Lord, and he is risen from the dead, and by him we have eternal life. Amen. Let us rise for prayer. We pray for the church, your people, O God, led from slavery in the wilderness of death to freedom and life through your forgiveness of sin in Jesus. Grant us boldness to proclaim the saving gospel to all those still captive, and for strength in the face of temptation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Bless all pastors and church workers that they be kept in holiness, and for those who receive their ministry that they be brought to faith and sustained in hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Give us courage in the face of temptation, strength in time of test, and hope in the face of despair, that nothing may cause our faith to waver from our confidence in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless the government and institutions of our land and throughout the world, for the light of your word to shine in the wilderness of unbelief, and for peace in our nation and throughout the world, and among the nations of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Grant comfort and healing to those suffering from cancer. Brenda, Carolyn, Lisa, Bruce, Gloria, Stephanie, Kathleen, Patsy, Robert, Krista, Kelly, Dylan, and Lindley Joe. Continue to give your aid to Bridget, Kim, Shirley, Trish, Bennett, Henrietta, and Sherry. Bless with healing Rick, Kenneth, Matt, Nicole, Debbie, Alan, David, Shirley, Myrtle, Sylvia, Cindy, Ruby, Nell, and Kent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the sick and those who suffer any need of body, mind, or soul, that you would grant them healing according to your good and gracious will and strength to endure their inflections. We pray especially for Greg, Barbara, Cynthia, Ed, Jim, Larry, Dwayne, Ember, Bob, Paulette, Sarah, Ashley, Ron, David, John, Justin, and Kimbra. Bless those who are recovering from a stroke. Jim, Jerry, Jennifer, and Kim. Give a strong recovery to those recovering from surgery. Carol, Millie, Geraldine, Alan, Jim, Sabrina, James, and Lisa. And grant your presence, O Lord, to be with Zach, who serves in the National Guard on our border. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Give peace and comfort to our shut-ins. Dorothy, Joyce, George and Carrie, let us pray to the Lord. For hearts fully prepared through repentance and faith to receive the gifts of the Lord's body and blood, and for the will to show forth in our lives the fruits of this blessed communion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, our Lord, we commend ourselves and all for we pray. Trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared to joyfully receive the Paschal Feast in sincerity and in truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, and we're praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Praise to you, Lord of heaven and earth, you have revealed your mercy to us in granting us your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
We give thanks for the redemption prepared for us through Jesus Christ and pray you to grant us your Holy Spirit that enlightened with a living faith, we might be worthy to receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it, gave the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also to the cup, after supper, when he given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is new test of my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of all your sins. This do as often you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. You may be seated. Welcome to the altar, Lord. Take a knee. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Take and drink the blood of Jesus shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Go now in the peace of the Lord. Amen.
Now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you, keep you steadfast in the true faith, life everlasting, and the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh Lord, in your great goodness you delivered your people from old, of old from slavery to freedom and brought them to the land of promise. We give you thanks for having delivered us from the slavery of our sins through the cleansing of our Savior's blood and for our communion upon his flesh and blood in this sacrament, assuring us that we belong to him through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord, Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Oh,